Please. On twitch.tv slash Norse meat? <laughs> my goodness, hmm. my goodness, my goodness. Hi, no, everybody. my goodness. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> oh, I got an ad. I've, no. Cool. So, you got an ad? Oh. Because so, I was oh. waiting to do my resub. Oh. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> hi, everybody. Welcome <laughs> to the Home Buddies. How do I pop out my own chat? Uh, on the bottom left side, you are going to be able to pop out chat from the gears. It's going to be about one, two, three, four, five, six options down. Yeah, under my preferences, yeah. I think. Uh, so the bot on the what, in the chat uh, on chat settings on the on the right mm -hmm. side, bottom yeah. right uh, where the gear, click that. Yeah. And yeah. then that uh, and under my preferences right there, which is the top one, it says pop out chat underneath hi oh, chat. Yeah. I think I was hi in the chat. That that's right. I was in the mod settings. It wasn't there. Oh, okay. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All good. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> hi. Hi. So yes, Hello. we are here tonight to perform another ancient play. We've done a couple of them before. Uh, so let me just let me briefly set the scene. So think, think back. You're in the year 405 BC. You've mm. gathered at the theater of Dionysus in Athens to see a play by one of the greatest tragedians, possibly the greatest the greatest tragedian of all time, Euripides, and he's dead. And we're seeing a play that he wrote right before he died. Hasn't been performed yet. All right, and this is, of course, the Bacchae. Now I'm gonna give you a little, just a very brief background just so you, just so you know where we're coming from. So the Bacchae is gonna be about the god Dionysus. Now Dionysus has a bunch of different names that we'll hear in this play. He's known as Dionysus. He's known as Bacchus. He's known as Bromius. So if you hear some of these names, it's all the same dude. Um, He's the god of harvest, of wine, of fertility, of theater, and also of ecstasy and madness. So Ooh, we're, we're definitely going to see. He's we're definitely going to see that part of it. Yeah, he's 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 taking ecstasy. He's the, he's um, the god of Coachella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so real real quick, because this is important it's for the bitch. play. <laughs> <Yeah>. It's Bacchus. It's <laughs> uh, His parents are the god Zeus and a woman, a human woman named Semele. And after Semele got pregnant. Hera found out about it, Zeus's wife, and she was not too happy. So she came down in disguise as Semele's nurse and was okay. like, yeah, was, did you really sleep with Zeus? I don't believe you. If, you. if it's true, you should be able to ask him a favor. Have him appear to you as in his full presence. And Semele's like, all right. So she asked Zeus, and Zeus is like, no, no, don't, don't ask me that. Just, yeah, come on, prove it to me. So he comes in his full glory and radiance, and the house explodes, and she's turned to ash. And uh, <laughs> Zeus takes the unborn baby and seals it in his own thigh, where Dionysus grows until he's ready to be born. So, kind of a crazy story, but... Uh, yes. And so we're gonna... We're, <laughs> and this takes place in Thebes, uh, T-H-E-B-E-S. And so we're gonna see the other, the family members of Dionysus who are now the, uh, the rulers of Thebes. And, uh, oh, I should say, a couple of content warnings for this play. Things like mind control, animal sacrifice, Wild women, ritual slaughter, dismemberment, uh, so, some stuff like that. Rated R for wild <laughs> women. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, that was really the wild things, right? Or what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but what's really cool about this play in particular is that in ancient Greek plays, um, they didn't really show action on the stage. They talked about the action, and it all happened off stage. So we're going to see some really interesting aspects of that here with the horror elements of this play. Okay. And with that, okay. we are ready for Euripides's The Bacchae. Woo! <laughs> hype, hype, hype. All right, the scene. The Greek city of Thebes outside the royal palace. Dionysus, appearing as a young man, is alone with the palace behind him, its main doors facing the audience. He speaks directly to the audience. I've arrived here in the land of Thebes. I, Dionysus, son of Zeus, born to him from Semele, Cadmus's daughter, delivered by a fiery midwife, Zeus's lightning flash. Yes, I have changed my form from god to human, appearing here at the streams of Dersi, the waters of Ismarus. I see my mother's tomb, for she was wiped out by that lightning bolt. It's there, by the palace, still uh, with that rubble, the remnants of her house still smoldering from Zeus's living fire. 
Hera's undying outrage against my mother. But I praise Cadmus. He's made his daughter's shrine a sacred place. I have myself completely covered it with leafy shoots of grape varying vines. I've left the fabulously wealthy east, lands of Lydians and Phrygians, Persia's sun-drenched plains, walled towers in Bactria. I've moved across the bleak lands of the Medes, through rich Arabia, all Asian lands, along the Salt Sea coast, through those towns with their beautifully constructed towers full of barbarians and Greeks, all intermingled. Mm. Now I've come to Thebes, city of Greeks, only after I've set those Eastern lands dancing in the mysteries I established, making known to men my own divinity. Thebes is the first city of the Greeks where I've roused people to shout out my cries. With this deer skin draped around my body, this ivy spear, a thyrsus in my hand. For my mother's sisters have acted badly, something they of all people should avoid. They boasted aloud that I, Dionysus, was no child of Zeus, claiming Semele, once she was pregnant by some mortal man, attributed her bad luck in bed to Zeus. A story made up, they said, to trick Cadmus. Those sisters state that this is why Zeus killed her, because she lied about the man she'd slept with. So I've driven those women from their homes in a frenzy. They now live in the mountains, out of their minds. I've made them put on costumes, outfits appropriate for my mysteries. All Theban offspring, or at least all women, I've driven in a crazed fit from their homes. Now they sit out there among the rocks, underneath green pine trees, no roof overhead. Cadmus's daughter in their company as well. For this city has to learn, though against its will, that it has yet to be initiated into my Dionysian rites. Here I plead the cause of my own mother, Semele, appearing as a god to mortal men, the one she bore to Zeus. Now Cadmus, the old king, has just transferred his power, his royal authority, to Pentheus, his daughter's son, who in my case at least, fights against the gods, prohibiting me all sacrificial offerings. When he prays, he chooses to ignore me. For this neglect, I'll demonstrate to him, to all in Thebes, that I was born a god. Once these things here have been made right, I'll move on somewhere else, to some other land, revealing who I am. But if Thebans in this city, in their anger, try to make those Bacchic women leave, to drive them from the mountains forcibly, then I, commander of those maenads, will fight them. That's why I've transformed myself, assumed a mortal shape, altered my looks so I resemble any old human being. Now enter the chorus of Bacchae, dressed in ritual deer skin, carrying small drums like tambourines. But you there, you women who've left Molus, backbone of Lydia, my band of worshippers whom I've led here from barbarian <laughs> land, my comrades on the road and when we rest, take up your drums, those instruments of yours from Phrygian cities, first invented by Mother Rhea and myself. Move round here, beat those drums by Pentheus's palace. Let Cadmus's city see you while I go in person to the clefts of Mount Kith Kitharon, excuse me, to my Bacchae to join in their dancing. Exit Dionysus. From Asia, from sac sacred Tamalus. Uh, Tomolus, Tomulus? No. Tomolus. Tomolus. I've come to dance, to move swiftly in my dance for Bromius. Sweet and easy talk to cry out in celebration, hailing great God Bacchus, who's in the street, who's there, who? Let him stay inside, out of our way. Let every mouth be pure, completely holy. Speak no profanities. In my hymn, I celebrate our old eternal custom, hailing Dionysus. Oh, blessed is the man, the fortunate man, who knows the rituals of the gods, who leads a pious life, whose spirit merges with the Bacchic celebrations, frenzied dancing in the mountains, our purifying rites. One who reveres these mysteries, who waving the thrice's forehead, crowned with ivy, serves Dionysus. On Bacchae, on oh, Bacchae, move, bring home Romeus, our god, son of God, great Dionysus, from Phrygian mountains to spacious roads of Greece, hail Romeus! His mother dropped him early as her womb in 
forceful birth pangs, was struck by Zeus's flying lightning bolt, a blast which took her life. Then Zeus, son of Kronos, at once hid him away in a secret birthing chamber, buried in his thigh, shut in with golden clasps, concealed from Hera. Fates made him perfect, then Zeus gave birth to him. The gods with ox horns crowned with wreaths of snake. The, that's why the Maenads twist their head, wild snakes they capture. Oh, Thebes, nursemaid of Semele, put on your ivy crown. Flaunt your green you flaunt is sweet fruit. Consecrate yourself to Bacchus with stems of oak fir. Dress yourself in spotted fawn skins trimmed with white sheep's wool. As you wave your thrices, revere the violence it contains. All the earth will dance at once. Whoever leads our dancing, that one is Romeus. To the mountain, to the mountain, with a pack of women wait, all stung to frenzied madness, to leave their weaving shuttles goaded on by Dionysus. Oh, you dark chambers of the Curities, you sacred caves in the Crete, birthplace of Zeus, where by Corybantes in their caves, men with triple helmets made for me this circle of stretched high. In their wild, ecstatic dancing, they mixed this drum beat with the sweet, seductive tones of flutes from Phrygia, then gave it to Mother Rhea to beat time for the Bacchae. When they sang in ecstasy, nearby orgastic satyrs in ritual worship of the mother goddess that took that drum, then brought it into their biennial dance, bringing joy to Dionysus. He's welcome in the mountains when he sinks down to the ground. After the running dance, wrapped in holy deer skin, hunting the goat's blood, blood of the slain beast, devouring raw flesh with joy, rushing off in the mountains in Phrygia, and Lydia leading the dance. Bromius, et moi. The land flows with milk. The land flows with wine. The land flows with honey from the bees. He holds the torch high, our leader, the Bacchic one. Blazing flame of pine, sweet smoke like Syrian incense, trailing from his thrices as he dances. He runs here and here, rousing the stragglers. Among the Maynard shouts, his voice reverberates. On Bonkets, on with the glitter of Tamalis, which flows with gold, chant songs to Dionysus to the loud beat of your drums. Celebrate the god of joy with your own joy, with Phrygian cries and shouts. When sweet, sacred, when sweet, sacred pipes play out their rhythmic holy song in time to the dancing wanderers. Then to the mountains, on, on to the mountains. Then the Bacchanalian woman is filled with total joy, like a foal in pasture, right beside her mother, her swift feet in playful dance. Enter Tiresias, a very old blind man, dressed in clothing appropriate for the Dionysian ritual. He goes up to the palace door and knocks very aggressively. Where's the servant on the door? You in there, tell Cadmus to get himself out of the house. Again, do, again, ours lad, who came here from Sidon, Sidon? Then put up the towers of this Theban town. Go tell Tiresias, go tell him Tiresias is waiting for him. He knows well enough why I've come for him. I'm an old man and he's even older. But we've agreed to make ourselves a thri- a th us to put on fawn skins and crown our heads with garlands of these ivy branches. Enter Cadmus from the palace, a very old man, also dressed in clothing appropriate for the Dionysian ritual. Mm, yes, my dearest friend. I was, I was inside the house. I heard your voice. I, I recognized it, the voice of a man truly wise, 
So I've come equipped with all this God stuff. <laughs> we must, <laughs> we must sing his... Played by Rolf the dog. <laughs> <laughs> We will sing his praise as much as we can, for this Dionysus is my daughter's child. Now he's revealed himself a god of a god to men. Where must I go and dance? Where do I get to move my feet and shake my old gray head? You must guide me, Tiresias. One old man leading another, for you're the expert here. Oh, I'll never tire of waving this thrice thrarsis day and night, striking the ground. What rapture! Now we can forget that we're old men. You feel the same way that I do then, for I'm young and going to try the dancing. Shall we go up the mountain in a chariot? The god would not then get complete respect. So I'll be your nursemaid. One old man will take charge of another one? The god himself will get us to the place without our efforts. Of all the city, are we the only ones who will dance to honor Bacchus? Yes, indeed, for we're the only ones whose minds are clear. Uh, as for the others, well, their thinking's wrong. There'll be a lengthy wait. Take my hand. Here, take it. Make a pair of it in yours. I'm a mortal, so I don't mock the gods. <laughs> to the gods, we mortals are all ignorant. Those old traditions from our ancestors, the ones, the ones we've had as long as time itself... No argument will ever overthrow. In spite of subtleties, sharp minds invent. Will someone say I disrespect old age if I intend to dance with ivy on my head? Not so, for the god makes no distinctions whether the dancing is for young or old. He wants to gather honors from us all to be praised communally without division. Since you're blind to daylight, Tiresias, I'll be your seer, tell you what's going on. Pantheus, the child of Echion, the one to whom I handed power in this land, he's coming here to the house. He's in a rush. He looks so flustered. What news will he bring? Enter Pentheus with some armed attendants. At first, he does not notice Cadmus and Tiresias, not until he calls attention to them. It so happens I've been away from Thebes. I hear about disgusting things going on. Here in the city, women leaving home to go to silly Bacchus rituals, cavorting there in the mountain shadows with dancing honors, some upstart god, this Dionysus, whoever he may be. Mixing bowls in the middle of their meeting are filled with wine. They creep off one by one to lonely spots to have sex with men, claiming their Manitas, busy worshipping. But they rank Aphrodite, goddess of sexual desire, ahead of Bacchus. All the ones I've caught, my servant god, in our public prison, their hands chained up. All those not in the city, I'll chase them down, hunt them from the mountains. That includes Agave, who bore me to Echion, Eon, and Autotone, Akatone's mother. Once I've claimed them all in the Iron Fitters, I'll quickly end this perverse nastiness, this pocket celebration. People say some strangers have arrived, some wizard, a conjurer from the land of Lydia, with sweet-smelling hair and golden ringlets and Aphrodite's charms and a wine-dark eyes. He hangs around the young girls day and night, dangling in front of them his joyful mysteries. If I catch him in the city, I'll stop him. He'll make no more clatter with his thesaurus, his theresis, or wave his hair around. I'll chop off his head, slice it right down his body. The man claims that Dionysus is a god. Ha! <laughs> Alleging that once upon a time he was sewn up, stitched into Zeus's thigh, but Dionysus was burned to death along with Semele in the lightning strike because she lied. She maintained she had sex with Zeus. All this surely merits harsh punishment. Death by hanging. Whoever the stranger is, his insolence is an insult to me. He notices Cadmus and Tiresias for the first time. <laughs> Here's something totally astounding. I see the serious Asusail, all dressed up in dappled fawn skins. My mother's father, too. This is ridiculous. To take Theriasus and jump around like this? You, sir. I don't like to see such aren't foolishness from your old age. Why not throw out that ivy? And grandfather, why not let that Therius go? Therius, you're one who's put up, uh, Thesarius. You're the one who's put him up to this. You want to bring in some good, some new god for men so you'll be able to inspect more birds and from his sacrifice make more money. If your gray old age did not protect you, you'd sit and change with all of that bucky for such a ceremonial perversion. Whenever women at some banquet start to take pleasure in the gleaming wine, I say there's nothing healthy in their worshiping. 
That is impiety, oh stranger. Have you no reverence for the god, for Cadmus, who sowed the crop of men born from the earth? You are a child of Echion. Do you wish to bring your own family into disrepute? When a man of wisdom has good occasion to speak out and takes the opportunity, it's not that hard to give an excellent speech. You've got a quick tongue and seem intelligent, but your words don't make any sense at all. A fluent orator whose power comes from self-assurance and from nothing else makes a bad citizen, for he lacks sense. This man, this new god, whom you ridicule, it's impossible for me to tell you just how great he'll be in all of Greece. Young man, among human beings, two things stand out preeminent of highest rank. Goddess Demeter is one. She's the earth, though you can call her any name you wish. And she feeds mortal people cereal grains. The other one came later, born of Samil. He brought with him liquor from the grape, something to match the bread from Demeter. He introduced it among mortal men. When they can drink up what steams with streams off the vine, unhappy mortals are released from pain. It grants them sleep, allows them to forget their daily troubles. Apart from wine, there is no cure for human hardship. He, being a god, is poured out to the gods, so human beings receive fine benefits as gifts from him. And yet you mock him. Why? Because he was sown into Zeus's thigh? Well, I'll show you how this all makes sense. When Zeus grabbed him from the lightning flame, he brought him to Olympus as a god. But Hera wished to throw him out of heaven. So Zeus, in a manner worthy of a god, came up with a devious counterplan. From the sky, which flows around the earth, Zeus broke off a piece, shaped it like Dionysus, and gave that to Hera as a hostage. The real child he sent to nymphs to, he sent to, nymphs to raise, thus saving him from Hera's jealousy. Over time, people mixed up sky and thigh, saying he'd come from Zeus's thigh, changing words because he, a god, had once been hostage to goddess Hera. So they made up the tale. This god's a prophet too, for in his rites, the Bacchic celebrations and the madness, a huge prophetic power is unleashed. When the god fully enters human bodies, he makes those possessed by frenzy prophets. They speak of what will come in future days. He also shares the work of war god Ares, for there are times an army all drawn up, its weapons ready, can shake with terror. Before any man has set to his spear, such madness comes from Dionysus. Someday you'll see him on those rocks at Delphi, leaping with torches on the higher slopes, way up there between two mountain peaks, waving and brandishing his Bacchic wand. A great power in Greece. Trust me, Pentheus, don't be too confident. A sovereign's force controls men. If something seems right to you, but your mind's diseased, don't think that's wisdom. So come, welcome this god into your country. Pour libations into him. Then celebrate these Bacchic rites with garlands on your head. On women where Aphrodite is concerned, Dionysus will not enforce restraint. Such modesty you must seek in nature, where it already dwells. For any woman whose character is chaste, but won't be defiled by Bacchic revelry. Don't you see that? When there are so many people at your gates, you're happy. The city shouts your praise. It celebrates the name of Pentheus. The god, too, I think, derives great pleasure from being honored. So, and so Cadmus, whom you mock, I will crown our heads with ivy and join the ritual. An old gray team, but still we have to dance. Our words will not turn me against the god, for you are mad under a cruel delusion. No drug can heal that ailment. In fact, some drug caused it. Old man, you've not disgraced Apollo with your words. And by honoring this Dionysus, a great god, you show your moderation. My child, Tiresias has given you some good advice. You should live among us, not outside tra traditions. At this point, you're flying around, thinking but not clearly. For if, as you claim, this man is not a god, why not call him one? Why not tell him a lie, a really good one? Then it will seem that some god has been born to Semele. We and all our family will win honor. Remember the dismal fate of Acteon, torn to pieces in some mountain forest by bloodthirsty dogs he raised himself? He, he boasted he was better in the hunt than Artemis. Don't suffer the same fate, man. Come here. <laughs> Let me crown your head with ivy. Join us in giving honor to this god. Keep your hands off me. Be off with you. Go to these bucket quick rules of yours. But don't infect me with your madness. As for the one who is in this foolishness has been your teacher. I'll bring him to justice. 
One of you, go quickly to where this man, Tyrius, has that seat of his. The place where he inspects his birds. Take some levers and knock it down. Demolish it completely. Turn the whole place upside down. All of it. Let his holy ribbons fly off the winds. That way, I'll really do him dan- uh, That way, I'll really do him damage. You others, go to the city. Scour it to capture this effi- effeminate? Effeminate stranger? Okay. Um, to capture this effeminate stranger who corrupts our women with his new disease and thus infects our beds. If you get him, tie him up and bring him here for judgment. A death by stoning. That way, he'll see his rights and Thebius come to a bitter end. <laughs> Exit Pentheus into the palace. Uh, who's speaking here? Is it me? Teresius. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I just lost my place for a second. Oh my god. Six, uh, 360. Uh, 360. Okay. Uh, 360 in, in brackets, brackets for mm-hmm. around 455 okay. in regular uh, numbers. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. Uh, wait, which one, which one? Which one? 360 in brackets? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, so you gotcha. Un- gotcha. You I, I see. Okay. You unhappy men, you've no idea just what it is you're saying. You've gone mad. Even before now, you weren't in your right mind. Let's be off, Cadmus. We'll pray to the god on Pentheus' behalf. Though he's a savage, and for the city too, so he won't harm it. Come with me. Bring the ivy colored staff, covered staff. See if you can help support my body. I'll do the same for you. It would be shameful if two old men collapsed, no matter. For we must serve Bacchus, son of Zeus. But you, Cadmus, you should be more careful. Or Pentheus will bring trouble in your home. I'm not saying this is a prophecy, but on the basis of what's going on. A man who's mad tends to utter madness. Exit Tiresias and Cadmus together on their way to the mountains. Holiness, queen of gods! Holiness, sweep over earth on wings of gold! Do you hear what Pentheus says? Do you hear the profanities he utters? The insults against Bromius, child of Semele, chief god among all blessed gods. For those who wear their lovely garlands in a spirit of harmonious joy, this is his special office to lead men together in the dance. Oops. Oh, what happened? (laughs) It's fine. Everything's fine. (laughs) Uh, Thank you for caring. (laughs) Um, To make them laugh as as the flute plays. To bring all sorrow to an end at the god's sacrificial feast. When the gleaming liquid grapes arrive. When the wine bowl casts its sleep on ivy-covered feasting men. Unbridled tongues and lawless folly come to an end only in disaster. A peaceful life of wisdom maintains tranquility. It keeps the home united, though gods live in the sky. From far away in heaven, they gaze upon the deeds of men. But being clever isn't wisdom. And thinking deeply about things is not suitable for mortal men. Our life is brief. That's why the man who chases greatness fails to grasp what's near at hand. That's brilliant. That's what madmen do when men who have lost their wits. That's what I believe. Would I might go to Cyprus, island of Aphrodite, where the Erotes, ero, erotes, erotes, er, erotes. Oh yeah, where the Erotes, bewitching goddess of love, soothe the hearts of humankind, or the Paphos, rich and fertile, not with rain, but with the waters of a hundred flowing mouths of strange and foreign river. Oh, Bromius, Bromius, inspired God who leads the Bacchae, lead me away lo- to lovely Piera where muses dwell, or to Olympus, sacred slopes where graces live, desire too, where it's lawful and appropriate to celebrate our rites with Bacchus. This, this God, a son of a goose, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite god Goose Goose, Goose. Goose and Maverick my favorite god Goose and Maverick god they have the need for speed this You're killing god. it Jess You're doing I know I know right yeah. okay. 
this god, a son of Zeus, rejoices in our banquets. He adores the goddess peace, and she brings riches with her and nourishes the young. The god gives his wine equally, sharing with rich and poor alike. It takes away all sorrow. But he hates the man who doesn't care to live his life in happiness by day and through the friendly nights. From those who deny such common things, he removes intelligence, their knowledge of true wisdom. So I take this as my rule. Follow what common people think, do what most men do. Enter a group of soldiers bringing Dionysus with his arms tied up. Pentheus enters from the palace. Ah, uh, Pentheus, we're here because we've caught the prey you sent us out to catch. Uh, uh yes, our attempts have proved uh, successful. Uh, the beast you you see here okay. was tame with us. Uh, he didn't try to run. No, he surrendered willingly, willingly enough, without turning pale or changing color on those wine dark cheeks. He even laughed at us, inviting us to tie him up and lead him off. <laughs> he stood still, <laughs> making it easier for me to take him in. Yeah, it was, it was awkward. So I said, uh, "Stranger, I don't want to, I don't want to lead you off, but I'm under orders here from from Pantheus, who sent me." And uh, uh, there's something else. Uh, those Bacchic women you locked up, the ones who took in chains to the public prison, uh, uh, they all escaped. They're gone. <laughs> Playing around in some meadow, calling out to Bromius, summoning their god. Uh, chains fell off their feet, just dropped on their own. He's open doors, not turned by human heads. This man here has come to Thebes full of amazing tricks, but now the rest of this affair is up to you. Soldier hands Chain Dionysus over to Pentheus. Untie his hands. I've got him in my nets. He's not fast enough to get away. Well, stranger... Soldier such a good, such a good read. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, I'm not kidding either. No, amazing, yeah, actually. I see this body of yours is not unsuitable for women's pleasure. That's why you've come to Thebes. As for your hair, it's long, which suggests that you're not a wrestler. It flows across your cheeks. That's most seductive. You've uh, white skin, too. You've looked after it. Avoid the sun's rays by staying up in the shade. While <laughs> with your beauty, you chase Aphrodite. But first, tell me something of your family. That, that's easy <laughs> enough. Though, though I'm not boasting now, you've heard of Tmolis, where flowers grow. I know it. It's around the town of Sardis. I'm from there. My homeland is Lydia. Why do you bring these rituals to Greece? Dionysus sent me, the son of Zeus. Is there some Zeus there who creates new gods? No, no, no. It's the same Zeus who wed Semele right here. Did this Zeus overpower you at night in your dreams or were your eyes wide open i saw him and he saw me he gave me the sacred rituals mm. Mm. tell me what they're like those <laughs> rituals of yours that information cannot be passed on to men like you those uninitiated in the rites of bacchus do they benefit those who sacrifice oh, they're worth knowing but only if you're allowed to hear you're avoided that question skillfully making me want to hear an answer. The rituals are no friend of any man who's hostile to the gods. This god of yours, since you saw him clearly, what's he like? He was what he wished to be, not made to order. Again, you fluently evade my question, saying nothing whatsoever. Yes, but then a man can seem totally ignorant when speaking to a fool. Is Thebes the first place you've come to with your god? All the barbarians are dancing in these rites. <laughs> I'm not surprised. They're stupider than Greeks. Uh, in this way, they are much wiser, but their laws are very different, too. When you dance these rites, is it at night or during a daylight? Mainly at night. Shadows confer solemnity. And deceive the women. It's all corrupt. <laughs> One can do shameful things in daylight, too. <laughs> you, you must be punished for these evil games. <laughs> you, too... You too, for foolishness and piety towards the god. <laughs> How brash this Bacchant is! How well prepared in using language. All right, what punishment am I to suffer? What harsh penalties will you inflict? Well, first I'll cut off this delicate hair of yours. My hair is sacred. I grow it for the god. And give me that Therius in your hand. 
This wand I carry is the gods, not mine. You'll have to seize it from me yourself. We'll lock your body up inside, in prison. The god will personally set me free whenever I so choose. That only works if you call him while among the bake. Mm, he sees my sufferings now, and from nearby. Where is he then? My eyes don't see him. He's where I am. You can't see him because you don't believe. Hmm. Seize him. He's insulting Thebes and me. I warn you, you shouldn't tie me up. I've got my wits about me. You've lost yours. <clears throat> but I'm more powerful than you, so I'll have you put in chains. You're quite ignorant of why you live, what you do, and who you are. I am Pantheus, son of Agave and Echion. A suitable name. It suggests misfortune. Go now. Lock him up in the adjoining stables. That way he'll see nothing but the darkness. There you can dance. As for all those women, those partners in crime you brought here with you, we'll sell them off. Or keep them here as slaves, working our looms. Once we've stopped their hands, beating those drumskins, making all that noise. Exit Pentheus into the palace, leaving Dionysus with the soldiers. I'll go then, for I won't have to suffer what won't occur. But you can be sure of this. Dionysus, whom you claim does not exist, will go after you for retribution after all your insolence. He's the one you put in chains when you treat me unjustly. The soldiers lead Dionysus away to an area beside the palace. Oh, sacred Dursi, blessed maiden, daughter of Achaeolus, your streams once received the newborn child of Zeus when his father snatched him from those immortal fires and then hid him in his thigh, crying out these words, Go, Dithyrambus, Dithyrambus, go, Dithyrambus, enter my male womb. I'll make you known as Bacchus to all those in Thebes who'll invoke you with that name, but you, oh sacred Dursi, why do you resist me, my garland-bearing company along your riverbanks? Why push me away? Why seek to flee from me? I tell you, you'll find joy in great <clears throat> milk vines from Dionysus. They'll make you love him. What rage, what rage shows up in earth, bound race of Pentheus, born to Echion, an earthbound mortal. He's descended from a snake, that Pentheus, a savage beast, not a normal mortal man, but some bloody monster who fights against the gods. He'll soon bind me in chains as a worshiper of Bacchus. Already he holds his house, my fellow Bacchic re revelers, hidden there in some dark cell. Do you see Dionysus, child of Zeus, your followers fighting their oppression? Come down, my lord, down from Olympus, wave your golden thrices to cut short the profanities of this bloodthirsty man. Where on Mount Nysa, which nourishes wild beasts, where on the Corsirian Kors, uh, heights, where do you wave your thrices over your worshippers, O Dionysus? Perhaps in those thick woods of Mount Olympus, where Orpheus once played his lyre, brought trees together with his song, collecting wild beasts around him. Oh, blessed Peria, whom Dionysus loves. He'll come to set you dancing in the Bacchic celebrations. He'll cross the foaming Axius, lead his whirling maenads on, leaving behind the river Lydia's, which enriches mortal men, and which, they say, acts as a Father, nourishing with many lovely streams, a land where horses flourish. The soldiers move in to round up the chorus of the Bacchae. As they do, the ground begins to shake. Thunder sounds, lightning flashes, and the entire palace starts to break apart. And you hear Dionysus shouting from within the palace, Io, hear me, hear me as I call you. Io, Bacchae, Io, Bacchae. Who's that? Who is it? Is it Dionysus' voice? It's calling me. But from what direction? Io, Io, I'm calling out again. The son of Semele, a child of Zeus. Io, Io, Lord and Master, come join our company, bro 
coming is. Oh, Romans! <gasps> Sacred Lord of Earthquake, shake this ground! The earthquake tremors resume. Oh, I'm um, chorus one, right? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I, s I soon Pentheus's palace will be shaken into rumble. Dionysus is in the house, revive him. We revere him, we revere him. I'm one, two, three. And four. And four? Okay. Before. And five. You'll see those stone lintels on the pillars. They're splitting up. It's Bromius calling, shouting to us from inside the walls. Let fiery lightning strike right now. Burn Pentheus's palace. Consume it all. Am I five also? Yes. Oh, I'm all the numbers. Okay, gotcha. All the numbers. Okay. <laughs> Look. You do, do you not see the fire there by the sacred tomb of Samil? The flame left by that thunderbolt from Zeus when the lightning flash destroyed her. All that time ago, all my ants threw your bodies on the ground. Down, down, for our master Zeus's son moves now against the palace to demolish it. That's a voice from like a mouse in a movie with like evil owls. <laughs> Who's <laughs> 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 he said it's lollipop guild? Yeah, some some Fievel goes west shit. Yeah, on the me. <laughs> there are no caps in, <laughs> no caps in America. Yeah. <laughs> Enter Dionysus, bursting through the palace front doors, free of all chains, smiling and supremely confident. Ah, my barbarian Asian woman. Women, do you lie there on the ground, prostrate with fear? It seems you feel Dionysus's power as he rattles Pentheus's palace. Get up now, be brave, and stop your trembling. Oh, how happy I am to see you once more! Our greatest light and all the joyful dancing we felt alone and totally abandoned. Did you feel despair when I was sent away, cast down in Pentheus's gloomy dungeon? <laughs> No trouble. I saved myself with ease. But did he bind your hands up with like chains? In this business. <laughs> like chains. In this business. <laughs> I was playing with him. He thought he was tying me up. The fool. He did not even touch me or handle me. He was so busy feeding his desires. In that stable where he went to tie me up, he found a bull. He threw the iron fetters around its knees and hooves. As he did so, he kept panting in his rage, dripping sweat from his whole body. His teeth gnawed his lip. I watched him, sitting quietly nearby. And after a while, Bacchus came and shook the place, seeing, setting the, his mother Semele's tomb on fire. Seeing that, Pentheus thought his palace was burning down. He ran round here and there, yelling to his slaves to bring more water. His, his servants set to work and all for nothing. Once I'd escaped, he ended all that work. Seizing a dark sword, he rushed inside the house. Then, it seems to me, but I'm guessing now, Bromius set up out there in the courtyard uh, some phantom image. Pentheus charged it, slashing away at nothing but bright air, thinking he was butchering me. There's more. Bacchus kept hurting him in still more ways. He knocked his house down, level with the ground, all shattered. So Pentheus has witnessed a bitter end to my imprisonment. He's dropped his sword, worn out, exhausted, a mere mortal daring to fight a god. So now I've strolled out calmly to you, leaving the house, ignoring Pentheus. Oh, wait. <laughs> it seems to me I hear marching feet. No doubt he'll come out front here soon enough. What will he say, I wonder, after this? Well, I'll deal with him quite gently. Even if he comes out breathing up a storm, after all, a wise man ought to keep his temper. Pentheus comes hurriedly out of the palace, accompanied by armed soldiers. What's happening to me? Total disaster! The strangers escaped and he, we just chained him up! Aha! Here is the man, right here. What's going on? How did you get out? How come you're here, outside my palace? Hold on. Calm down. <laughs> don't, be, don't be so angry. How'd you escape your chains and get here? Did I not say someone would release me? Or did you miss that part? Who was it? You're always explaining things in riddles. 
It was the one who cultivates for men the richly clustering vine. Ah, this Dionysus. Your words are a lovely insult to your god. He came to Thebes with nothing but good things. Seal off all the towers on my orders. All of them around the city. What for? Surely a god can make it over any wall. You're so wise, except in all those things in which you should be wise. Well, uh, I was born wise, especially in matters where I need to be. Enter the messenger, a cattle herder from the hills. But first, you'd better listen to this man. Hear what he has to say, for he's come here from the mountains to report to you. I'll still be here from you. I won't run off. <sighs> Pentheus, ruler of this land of Thebes, I've just left Citheron, the mountain where the sparkling snow never melts away. What's this important news you've come with? I saw those women in their Bacchic revels, those sacred screamers all driven crazy, the ones who run barefoot from their homes. I came, my lord, to tell you in the city the dreadful things they're doing. Their actions are beyond all wonder. But, my lord, first I wish to know if I should tell you openly re report what's going on up there, or whether I should hold my tongue. Your mood changes so fast, I, I, I get afraid. Your sharp spirit, your all too royal temper. Speak on. Whatever you have to report, you'll get no punishment at all from me. It's not right to vent one's anger on the just. The more terrible the things you tell me about those Bacchic women, the worse I'll move against the one who taught them all their devious tricks. The grazing cattle were just moving into upland pastures. All the hour the sun sends out its beams to warm the earth. Right then I saw them, three groups of dancing women. One of them, Otonoe led. Your mother, Agave, led the second group, and Eno led the third. They were all asleep, bodies quite relaxed, some leaning back on leafy boughs of pine, others cradling heads on oak leaf pillows, resting on the ground in all modesty. They weren't as you described, all drunk on wine or on the music of their flutes, hunting for Aphrodite in the woods alone. Once you heard my horned cattle lowing, your mother stood up, amid those bake, then called them to stir their limbs from sleep. They rubbed refreshing sleep out of their eyes and stood up straight there, a marvelous sight, to see such an orderly arrangement, women young and old and still unmarried girls. First, they let their hair loose down their shoulders, tied up the fawn skins. Some had untied the knots to loosen up the cords. Then around those skins, they looped some snakes who licked the women's cheeks. Some held young gazelles or wild wolf cubs and fed them up on their, on their own white milk, the ones who'd left behind at home a newborn child whose breasts were still swollen full of milk. They, dra <laughs> they draped themselves with garlands from oak trees, ivy and flowering yew. Then one of them, taking a thrysis, stuck a rock with it and water gushed out, fresh as dew, Another, using her thyrsus, scraped the ground at once. The gods sent fountains of wine up from the spot. All those craved white milk to drink just scratched the earth with their fingertips. It came out in streams. From, from their ivy wands, thick sweet honey dripped. Oh, if you'd been there, if you'd seen this, you'd come with reverence to the god whom you criticize so much. Well, we cattle herders and and shepherds met to discuss and argue with each other about the astonishing things we'd seen. And then a man who'd been in town a bit and had a way with words said to us all, You men who live in the holy regions of these mountains, how'd you like to hunt down Pantheus's mother, Agave, take her away from these Bacchic celebrations, do the king a favor? To all of us, he seemed to make good sense. So we set up an ambush, hiding in the bushes, laying down there, and the appointed time, uh, the women started the Bacchic ritual, brandishing the thyrsus, and called out to the god they cried to, Bromius, Zeus's son, the entire mountain, and its wild animals were, like them, in one Bacchic ecstasy. As these women moved, they made all things dance. Agave, by chance, was dancing close to me. Leaving the ambush where I'd been concealed, I jumped out, hoping to, to grab hold of her. But she screamed out, Oh, my quick hounds, men are hunting us. Come follow me. Come on, armed with that, that thyrsus in your hand. We ran off and so escaped being torn apart. But then those Bacchic women 
all unarmed, went at their, their heifers browsing on the turf, using their bare hands. You should have seen one ripping a fat, young, lowing calf apart, others tearing cows in pieces with their hands. You could have seen ribs and cloven hooves tossed everywhere, some hung up in branches dripping blood and gore, and bulls, proud beasts till then, with angry horns collapsed there on the ground, dragged down by the hands of a thousand girls. Hides covering their bodies were stripped off faster than you could wink your royal eye. Then, like birds carried up by their own speed, they rushed along the lower level ground beside Asapis's streams, that fertile land which yields its crops to Thebes. Like fighting troops, they raided Hyce and Erethe below rocky Scytheron, destroying everything, snatching children from their homes. Whatever they carried, their shoulders, even bronze or iron, never tumbled off onto the dark earth, though nothing was tied down. They carried fire in their hair, but those flames never singed them, singed even. Some of the villagers, enraged at being plundered by the Bakke, seized weapons. The sight of what happened next, my lord, was dreadful, for their pointed spears did not draw blood. But when those women threw the thrysoi in their hands, they wounded them and drove them back in flight. The women did this to men, but not without some god's assistance. They then went back to where they started from, these fountains which the god had made for them. They washed off the blood. Snakes licked their cheeks, cleansing their skin of every drop. <sighs> My lord, you must welcome this god into our city, whoever he is. He's a mighty god in many other ways. The people say, so I've heard, he gives to mortal human beings that vine which puts an end to human grief. Without wine, there's no more Aphrodite or any other pleasure left for men. I'm afraid to talk freely before the king, but nonetheless, I'll speak. The Dionysus is not inferior to any god. This Dionysian arrogance like fire keeps flaring up close by. A great insult to all Greeks. We must not hesitate. Go the electric. Go to the electric gates. Call out the troops, the heavy infantry, all fast cavalry. Tell them to muster along with all those who carry shields, all the archers too, the men who pull the bowstrings back by hand. We'll march out against those Bacchae. In this whole business, we will lose control if we have to put up with what we've suffered from these women. You've heard what I had to say, Pentheus, but you're still not convinced? Though I'm suffering badly at your hands, I say you shouldn't go to war against a god. You should stay calm. Bromius will not let you move his Bacchae from their mountains. Don't preach to me. You've got out of prison. Enjoy that fact. Or shall I punish you some more? I'd sooner make an offering to that god than in some angry fit kick at his whip, a mortal going into battle with a god. I'll sacrifice all night for the slaughter of those women just as they deserve in the force of Synthrion. You'll all run. What a disgrace to turn your bronze shields round, fleeing the thirsoy of those Bacchic women. It's useless trying to argue with this stranger. Whatever he does or suffers, he won't shut up. Uh, my lord, uh, there's still a chance to end this calmly. By doing what? Should I become a slave to my own slaves? I'll bring the women here without the use of any weapons. <laughs> I don't think so. You're setting me up for one of your tricks again. What sort of trick if I want to save you in my own way? You've made some arrangement, you and your god, so you can always dance your Bacchaean orgies. <laughs> well, that is true. I have made some arrangement with the god. You there, bring me my weapon. And you, no more talk. Keep quiet. Uh, 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 just, just a minute. How would you like to gaze upon those women sitting together in the mountains? I'd like that. Yes, for that I'd pay in gold, and pay a lot. Why is that? Why do you desire it so much? I'd be sorry to see the women drunk. Would you derive pleasure from looking on, viewing something you find painful? Yes, I would, if I was sitting in the trees in silence. But even if you go there secretly, they'll track you down. You're right. I'll go there openly. 
So you're prepared, are you, to make the trip? Shall I lead you there? Let's go. And with all speed. I've got time. Uh, in that case, you must clothe your body in a dress. One made of eastern linen. What? I'm not going up there dressed as a man? I've got to change myself into a woman? Well, if they see you as a man, they'll kill you. <sighs> right again. You always have the answer. Dionysus taught me all these things. How can I best follow your suggestion? I'll go inside your house and dress you up. What? Dress up in a female outfit? I can't do that. I'd be ashamed to. You're still keen to see the main ads, aren't you? <sighs> What's up, what sort of clothing do you recommend? How should I cover up my body? I'll fix up a long hair piece for your head. All right. What's the next piece of my outfit? Well, a dress down to your feet, then a, a headband to fit just here around your forehead. What else? What other things will you provide? Oh, well, a thyrsus for you to hold and a dappled fawn skin. No, I, I can't dress up in women's clothes. But if you go fighting with these bakai, you'll cause bloodshed. <laughs> <sighs> yes, that's true. So first, we, we must go up and spy on them. Hunt down evil by committing evil. That sounds like a wise way to proceed. But how will I make it through the city without the Thebians noticing me? Oh, we go by deserted streets. I'll take you. Well, anything is easier to accept than being made a fool by Bacchae women. Let's go in the house. I'll think what's best. As you wish. Whatever you do, I'm ready. I'll go in now. It's a choice of going with weapons or taking your advice. Exit Pentheus into the palace. Dionysus turns to face the chorus. My women, that man's now entangled in our net. He'll go to those Bacchae, and there he'll die. That will be his punishment. Dionysus, you're not far away. Now it's up to you. Punish him. First, make sure he goes insane with some crazed fantasy. If his mind is strong, he'll not agree to put on women's clothes. But he'll do it if you make him mad. I want him made the laughing stock of Thebes while I lead him through the city, mincing as he moves along in women's clothing after he made himself so terrifying with all those earlier threats. Now I'll be off to fit Pentheus into the costume he'll wear when he goes down to Hades. Once he's butchered by his mother's hands, he'll come to acknowledge Dionysus, son of Zeus, born in full divinity, most fearful and yet most kind to men. Exit Dionysus. Okay, we got it. <laughs> oh, when will I be dancing, leaping barefoot through the night, flinging back my head in ecstasy in the clear, cold, dew, fresh air like a playful fawn, <laughs> celebrating its green joy across the meadows, joy that it's escaped the fearful hunt as she runs beyond the hunters, leaping past their woven nets. They call out to their hounds to chase her with still more speed, but she strains every limb, racing like a windstorm, rejoicing by the river plain in places where no hunters lurk, in the green living world beneath the shady branches, the foliage of the trees, what is wisdom? What is finer than the rights men gets from gods? To hold their powerful hands over the heads of their enemies? Ah, yes. What's good is always loved. The power of the gods is difficult to stir, but it's a power we can count on. It punishes all mortal men who honor their own ruthless wills, who in their fits of madness failed to reverence the gods. Gods track down every man who scorns their worship, using their cunning to conceal the enduring steady pace of time. For there's no righteousness in those who recognize our practice, what's beyond our customary laws. The truth is easy to acknowledge, whatever is divine is mighty. Whatever has been long established laws and eternal natural truth. What is wisdom? What is... Nope, I already said that. What? What have I done? Yeah, there's more. 
Yeah, there's more. There's more. Did I say that? Oh, I that. <laughs> what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is being doing stuff? great? I love living. I'm living. <laughs> like fuck, I already said this. So like, what's wrong with her? What is wisdom? What is finer than the rights men get from guns to hold their powerful hands over the heads of their enemies? Ah, uh, yes. What's good is always loved. Whoever has escaped a storm at sea is a happy man in harbor. Whoever overcomes great hardship is likewise another happy man. Various men outdo each other in wealth, in, in power, in all sorts of ways. The hopes of countless men are infinite in number. Some make rich men, some come to nothing. So I consider that man blessed who lives a happy life okay existing day by day <laughs> enter dionysus from the palace he calls back through the open doors you who are so desperately eager to see those things you should not look upon so keen to chase what you should not pursue i mean you pentheus come out here now outside the palace where i can see you dressed up as a raving bacchic female to spy upon your mother's company Enter Pentheus, dressed in women's clothing. He moves in a deliberately overstated female way, enjoying the role. Overstated? Ooh. Wow. Okay. You look just like one of Cadmus's daughters. <laughs> Fancy that! I seem to see two sons, two images of seven gated Thebes, and you looking like a bull leading me out here with those horns growing from your head. Were you once upon a time a beast? <laughs> it's certain <laughs> now that you've changed into a bull. The god walks here. He's made a pact with us. Before, his attitude was not so kind. Now you're seeing just what you ought to see. How do I look? Am I holding myself just like Eno or my mother Agave? When I look at you, I think I see them. But here, this, this strand of hair is out of place. It's not under the headband where I fixed it. I must have worked it loose inside the house, shaking my head when I moved here and there, practicing my Bacchalian dance. I, I'll rearrange it for you. It's only right that I should serve you. Straighten up your head. All right, then. You can be my dresser, now that I've transformed myself for you. Ugh. Your girdle's loose, and those pleats in your dress are crooked, too, down at your ankle there. Yes, that seems to be true of my right leg. But on this side, the dress hangs perfectly, down the full length of my limb. Now, once you see those Bacchic women acting modestly, once you confront something you don't expect, you'll consider me your dearest friend. This, this Thyrsus, should I hold it in my right hand or in my left? Which is more suitable in Bacchic celebration? Here, in, in your right hand. You must lift your right foot in time with it. Ah. Your mind has changed. I applaud you for it. Well, I'd be powerful enough to carry the forest of Syntharion on my shoulders, along with all those Bacchic females? If you have desire, you'll have power. Before this, your mind was not well adjusted, but now it's working in you as it should. Are we going to take some lovers with us, or shall I rip the forest up by hand, putting arm and shoulder under mountain peaks? As long as you don't utterly destroy those places where the nymphs all congregate, where Pan plays his music on his pipes... Oh, you mentioned a good point. I'll use no force to get the better of these women. I'll conceal myself there in the pine trees. You'll find just the sort of hiding place a spy should find who wants to hide himself, so he can gaze upon the maenads. <laughs> That's good. I can picture them right now, in the woods, <laughs> going at it like rutting birds, clutching each other as they make sweet love. Mm, perhaps. That's why you're going, as a guard, to stop all that. Maybe you'll capture them, unless you're captured first. <laughs> Lead on. Through the center of our land of thieves. I'm the only man in all the city who dares to undertake this enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> you bear the city's burden by yourself. All by yourself. So your work is waiting there, the tasks that have been specially set for you. Follow me. I'm the guide who'll rescue you. When you return, someone else will bring you back. <laughs> That'll be my mother. For everyone, you'll have become someone to celebrate. That's why I'm going. You'll be carried back. You're pampering me. In your mother's arms. <laughs> You've really made up your mind to spoil me. <laughs> <laughs> to spoil you, that's true, but in my own way. <laughs> then I'll be off to get what I deserve. <laughs> Exit Pentheus. 
You fearful, terrifying man, on your way to horrific suffering. Well, you'll win a towering fame as high as heaven. Hold out your hand to him, Agave. You two, her sisters, Cadmus's daughters. I'm leading this young man in your direction for the great confrontation where I'll triumph. I and Bromius. What else will occur, events will show as they occur. Exit Dionysus. Up now, you hounds of madness, go up now into the mountains, go where Cadmus's daughters keep their company of worshippers. Goad them into furious revenge against that man, that raving spy, all dressed up in his woman's clothes, so keen to glimpse the maenads. His mother will see him first, and he spies on them in secret from some level rock or crag. She'll scream out to her maenads, who's the man who's come here to the mountains, to these mountains, tracking Cadmian mountain dancers. Oh, my Bacchae, who, Bacchae, who has come? From whom was this man born? He is not born of woman's blood. He must be Lioness's whelp or spawn from Libyan gorgons. Let justice manifest itself. Let Justice march sword in hand to stab him in the throat, that godless, lawless man. I'm just earthborn seed of Echion. <laughs> Any man intent on wi wickedness, turning his unlawful rage against your rights, all back as uh, against the worship of your mother, a man who sets out with an insane mind, his courage founded on a falsehood, who seeks to overcome by force, but simply can't be overcome. Let death set his intentions straight, for a life devoid of grief is one which receives without complaint. Whatever comes down from the gods, that's how mortals ought to live. Wisdom is something I don't envy. My joy comes from hunting other things lofty and plain to everyone. They lead man's life to good in purity and reverence, honoring God's day and night. Eradicating from our lives customs lying beyond what's right. Let justice manifest itself. Let justice march sword in hand to stab him in the throat. The godless, godless man. Just on board, see the backyard. Appear now to our sight, O Bacchus. Come as a bull or many headed serpent, or else some fire breathing lion. Now go, Bacchus, with your smile like face. Cast your deadly noose upon that hunter of the Bacchae as the group of maenads brings him down. Enter second messenger, one of Pentheus's attendants. How I grieve for this house. In early days so happy throughout Greece, home of that old man Cadmus from Sidion, who sowed the fields to harvest the earth-born crop produced from serpent Orpheus. How I now lament. I know I'm just a slave. But nonetheless, do you, do you do you bring us news? Has something happened? Something about the Bacchae? Pentheus, the child of Echion, is dead. Oh my Lord, Bromius! <laughs> now your divine greatness is made manifest, bitch. <laughs> what are you saying? Why that song, women? How can you now rejoice like this for the death of one who was my master? We are strangers here in Thebes. So we sing out our joy and chants from foreign lands. No longer need we cower here in fear of prisoners' claims. Chains. Do you think Thebes lacks sufficient men to take care of your punishment? Dionysus. Oh, Dionysus. He's the one with the power over me, not Thebes. Oh, that you may be forgiven, but to cry aloud with joy when such disaster comes. Women, that's not something you should do. Speak to me, tell all. How did death strike him down, that unrighteous man, that man who acted so unjustly? Once we left the settlement of Thebes, we went across the river Aspousis, then started to climb up the mountain Cithrion. Patheus and myself, I following the king, the stranger was our guide, scouting the way. First, we sat down on our grassy meadow, keeping our feet and tongues quite silent, so we could see without being noticed. There was a valley there shut in by the cliffs, though its refreshing waters flowed, the pines providing shade. The Menides sat there, their hands all busy with delightful work, some of them with ivy stands, strands repairing damage through Thrissoi, 
while others sang chanting Bacchae songs to one another, carefree as fillies, freed from harness. Then Pentheus, that unhappy man, not seeing the crowd of women, spoke up. Stranger! I can't see from where we're standing, my eyes can't glimpse those crafty maids. But up there, on that hill, a pine tree stands. If I climb that, I might see those women and witness the disgraceful things they do. Then I saw that stranger work a marvel. He seized the pine tree's topmost branch. It stretched up to the heaven and brought it down, pulling it toward the dark earth, bending it as if it were a bow or some curved wheel forced into a circle while stacked with our pegs. That's how the stranger made that tree bend down, forcing the mountain pine to earth by hand, something no mortal man could ever do. He sent Pentheus in that pine tree's branches. Then his hands released the tree, but slowly, so it stood up straight, being very careful not to shake Pentheus loose. So that pine towered straight up to heaven, with my king perched on its back. Menides could see him there more easily than he could spy on them. As he was just becoming visible, the stranger had completely disappeared. Some voice, I guess it was Dionysus, cried out from the sky, Young women, I've brought you the man who laughed at you, who ridiculed my rights. Now punish him. As he shouted this, a dreadful fire arose, blazing between the earth and the heaven. The air was still. In the wooded valley, no sound came from the leaves, and all the beasts were silent too. The women stood up at once. They've heard the voice, but not distinctly. They gazed around them. Then again, the voice shouted his commands. When Cadmus' daughters clearly heard what Dionysus ordered, they rushed out, running as fast as, they, as fast as doves, moving their feet at an amazing speed. His mother Agave, with both his sisters and all the Bacchae, charged straight through the valley. The torrents, the mountain cliffs, pushed to a God-inspired frenzy. They saw the king there, sitting in that pine. First, they scaled a cliff face, looming up opposite the tree, and started throwing rocks, trying to hurt him. Others threw branches, or hurried their threesel through the air at him. Sad, miserable Pentheus, their target. But they didn't hit him. No, the poor man sat high, beyond their frenzied cruelty, trapped up there, no way to save his skin. Then, like lightning, they struck oak branches down, trying them as leaves to uproot the tree. When, they attempted all, when the attempts all failed, Agave said, Come now, make a circle around the tree. Then, Menides, each of you must seize a branch so we can catch the climbing beast up there. Stop him making our god's secret dances known. Thousands of hands grabbed the tree and pulled. They yanked it from the ground. Pentheus fell, crashing to earth from his lofty perch, screaming in distress. He knew well enough something dreadful was about to happen. His priestess mother first began the slaughter. She hurled herself at him. Pentheus tore off his headband, untying it from his head so wretched Agave would recognize him so she wouldn't kill him. Touching her cheek, he cried out, It's me, mother! Pentheus, your child! You gave birth to me! In Echion's house! Pity me, mother! Don't kill your child, because I've made mistakes! But Agave was foaming at the mouth, eyes rolling in her sockets, her mind not set on what she ought to think. She didn't listen. She was possessed in a pocket frenzy. She seized his left arm below the elbow, pushed her foot against the poor man's ribs, then tore his shoulder out! The strength she had, it was not her own. The god put power into those hands of hers. Meanwhile, Eno, her sister, went at the other side, ripping off chunks of Pentheus' flesh. While Atone and all the Bacchae, the whole crowd of them attacked as well, all the women howling together. As long as Pentheus was still alive, he kept on screaming. The women cried in triumph. One brandished an arm, another held a foot complete with hunting boot. The women's nails tore his ribs apart. Their hands grew bloody, tossing bits of flesh back and forth for fun. His body parts lie scattered everywhere, some under rough rocks, some in the forest, deep in the trees. They're difficult to find. As for the poor victim's head, his mother stumbled on it. Her hands picked it up, then stuck it on a threesis at the tip. Now she carries it around Cythrion, as though it was some wild lion's head. She left her sisters dancing with the Menides. She's coming here, inside these very walls, showing off with pride her ill-fated prey, calling out to her fellow hunters, Bacchus, her companion in the chase, the winner, the glorious victor. By serving him her great triumph, she wins only tears. As for me, I'm leaving this disaster before Agave gets back home again. 
The best thing is to keep one's minds controlled and worship all that comes down from the gods. That, in my view, is the wisest custom for those who can conduct their lives that way. Exit messenger. Let's dance to honor Bacchus! Let's shout to celebrate what's happened here. Happy to Pentheus, child of the serpent who put on women's clothes, who took up the beautiful and blessed uh, Thyrus. Uh, Thyrus. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I wanted to say it right. Thursus, who took up the beautiful and blessed Thursus. His certain death, disaster brought on by the bull. You Bacchic women descended from old Cadmus. You've won glorious victory. One which ends in tears, which ends in lamentation. A noble undertaking this to drench one's hands in blood. Lifeblood dripping from one's only son. Wait, I see Agave, Pentheus' mother on her way home, eyes transfixed. Let's now welcome her, the happy revels of our god of joy. Enter Agave, cradling the head of Pentheus. Oh. From the mountains I brought home this ivy tendril freshly cut. We've had a blessed hunt. I see. As your fellow dancer, I'll accept it. I caught this young lion without a trap, as you can see. What desert was he in? Catherion. Catherion? Catherion killed him. Well, who struck him down? The honor of the first blow goes to me. I'm the dancing. I'm called Blessed Agave. Who else? Well, from Cadmus. From Cadmus what? His other children laid hands on the beast, but after me, only after I did first, we've had a good hunting, so come share our feast. What? You want me to eat that? With you? Oh, you unhappy woman. This is a young bull. Look at this cheek, it's just growing downy under the crop of his, of his soft hair. His hair makes him resemble some wild beast. Bacchus is a clever huntsman. He wisely set his maids on his beast. On this beast. Uh, yeah, uh, so our master is indeed a hunter. Have you any praise for me? I praise you. Soon all Cadmus's people. And Pentheus, your son? We'll celebrate his mother. Who caught the beast just like a lion? It's a strange trophy. <laughs> and a strangely captured one, too. So you're saying, like, you're proud of what you've done? Yes, I'm delighted. Great things I've done. Great things I've done. Clear for all to see, even you. Come on. Well, then, oh, you most unfortunate woman, show off your hunting prize, your sign of victory to all the citizens. All of you here, all of you living in the land of Thebes, in this city with its splendid walls, come see this wild beast we hunted down. Daughters of Cadmus, not with thonged spears, Thessalian javelins, or by using nets, but with our own white hands, our fingertips. After this, why should huntsmen, why gotta be white, uh, boast aloud when no one needs the implements they use? We've caught this beast by the hand, tore it apart tore it apart with our own hands. But where's my father? He should come here. And where's Pentheus? Where's my son? He should take a ladder. <laughs> Set it against the house. Come on. Oh, fix this lion's head way up there, high on the palace's front. I've captured it and brought it home with me. Enter Cadmus in attendance, carrying parts of Pentheus's body. Follow me, all those of you who carry some part of wretched Pantheus. You slaves come here, right by the house. They place the bits of Pantheus's body together in a chest in front of the palace. Oof, I'm worn out. So many searches, but I picked up the body. I came across it in the rocky clefts on Mountain Scytheron, ripped to pieces, no parts lying together in one place. It was in the woods, difficult to search. Someone told me what my daughter done, those horrific acts, once I'd come back, returning here with old, t 
Tiresias inside the city walls, back from Bucay. So I climb the mountains once again. Now I bring home this child the Menades killed. I saw Autonoe, who once bore Acteon to Aristheus and Eno. Nailed it. She was with her there in the forest, both still possessed, quite mad, poor creatures. Someone said Agave was coming here, still doing her brachic dance. He spoke the truth, for I see her there. What a wretched sight. Father, now you can be truly proud. Among all living men, you produce by far the finest daughters. I'm talking of all of us, but mostly of myself. I've left behind my shuttle and my loom and risen to great things. Catching wild beasts with my, my bare hands. Now I've captured him. I'm holding him in my, him in my, my arms. The finest trophy. As you can see, bringing it back home to you so it may hang here. Take this, Father. Let your hands welcome it. Be proud of it for what I've, of what I caught. Summon all your friends to have a banquet, for you are blessed indeed. Blessed your daughters have achieved these things. This grief's beyond measure. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> beyond endurance. With these hands of yours, you've murdered him. You strike down this sacrificial victim, this offering to the gods, then invite me and all of Thebes to share a fucking banquet. <laughs> Alas, first for your sorrow, then my own. Lord God, Bromius, born into this family, has destroyed us, acting out his justice. But too, too much so. Why, why scowling eyes? Give it back to me. It's mine. You never took it. It's mine. Yoink. Why scowling eyes? How sorrowful and solemn old men become. As for my son, I hope he's a fine hunter who copies his mother's hunting style. When he rides out with young men of thieves, catching after creatures in the wild, the only thing he seems capable of doing is fighting with the gods. It's up to you, father, to reprimand him for it. Who will call him into my sight? So I can see my good luck for myself. Alas. Alas. What dreadful pain you'll feel when you recognize what you've just fucking done. If you stay forever <laughs> in, your, in your present state, you'll be unfortunate. But you won't feel as if you've suffered unhappiness. But what in all this is wrong or painful? First, you raise your eyes. Look up into the sky. All right. <laughs> well, why? Tell me to look up here. Does the sky still seem the I'm same looking. to you, or has it changed? It seems, well, brighter. More translucent than it was before. And your inner spirit, is it still shaking? I, I don't understand what it is that you're asking, but my mind is starting to clear somehow. It's changing it's, it's can you it's hear me was before can you hear me can you answer clearly yes but father what we've discussed before I've, I've i've quite forgotten then tell me this to whose house did you come when you got married you you gave me to ekian who men say was one of those who grew from seeds you cast in that house you bore your husband a child what was his name? His name was Pentheus. I conceived him with his father. <clears throat> well then, this head your hands are holding, whose is it? It's, it's a lion's. That's what the hunters said. Inspect it carefully. You couldn't do that without much effort. What is, what is this? What am I holding? Look at it! You'll understand more clearly. What I see fills me with horror and pain. Such agony. Does it still seem to you to be a lion's head? <laughs> it's appalling. This animal holding belongs to Pentheus. 
Yeah, that's right. I was lamenting his fate before you recognized him. Who killed him? How did he come into my hands? Harsh truth. How you come to light at the wrong moment. Tell me my heart is pounding in me to hear what you're about to say. You killed him. You and your sisters. Where was he killed at home in what sort of place? He was killed where dogs once made a common meal of Acteon. Cadmus. Why did this poor bag go to Kitharion? He was there to ridicule the god and you for celebrating Dionysus. But how did... He ha- How did we happen to be up there? You were all insane. The entire city was in a bacchic madness. Now I see. Dionysus has destroyed us all. He took offense at being insulted. You did not consider him a god. Father, where is the body of my dearest son? I had trouble tracking down the body. I brought back what I found. Are all his limbs laid out just as they should be? And Pentheus, what part did he play in my madness? Like you, he was reverent to the god. That's why the god linked you and him together in the same disaster. Thus destroying the house and me, for I have no children left. Now I see this offspring of your womb, you unhappy woman, cruelly butchered in the most shameful Uh. way. He was the one who brought new vision to our family. My child, you upheld the honor of our house. My daughter's son, you were feared in Thebes. No one who saw you ever would insult me, though I was old, for you would then inflict fit punishment. Now the mighty Cadmus, the man who sowed and later harvested the most splendid crop, the Thebian people, will be in exile, banished from his home, a dishonored man. Dearest of men, even though, my child, you're alive no more, I count you among those closest to me. You won't be touching my cheek anymore, holding me in your arms and calling me grandfather as you ask me, old man, who's injuring or dishonoring you? Who upsets your heart with any pain? Tell me, Father, so I can punish him. Anyone who treats you in in an unjust way. Now you're in this horrifying state. I'm in misery. Your mother's fucking pitiful, and all your relatives are in despair. If there's a man who, who disrespects the gods, let him think about how this man perished, then he should develop faith in them. I'm sorry for you, Cadmus. You're in pain. But your grandson deserved his punishment. Father, you see how all this has changed for me. From being a royal and honored daughter, the mother of a king, I'm now transformed in an abomination, something to fill all people's hearts with horror. With disgust, the mother who slaughtered her only son, who tore apart, ripping out the heart for a child who filled her own heart with joy and hope to honor this god, (laughs) Dionysus. But father, give me your permission now to lay out here the body of my son, prepare his corpse for proper burial. (laughs) No easy task to undertake. His body, all the parts I could collect, lies here in this chest. Oh, not a pretty sight. My own (laughs) eyes can hardly bear to see him. But if you think you can endure the work, then, my child, begin the appropriate rites. Alas, my poor son, my only child. Destroyed by his mother's bacchic madness. How could these hands of mine, which loved him so, have torn these limbs apart? Ripped out his flesh. Here's an arm for which he held me for in all these years, growing stronger as he grew into a man. His feet. 
of how he used to run to me seeking assurance of his mother's love. His face was handsome on the verge of manhood. See the soft still resting on these lips which have kissed me a thousand times or more, all this and all the rest here before us, oh Zeus, all you Olympia gods. It makes no sense, it's unendurable. How could the god have wished such things on me? Ah, ah. Lady, you must bear what cannot be borne. Your suffering is intense, but the god is just. What is with? Oh wait, uh, of course, leader. Wait, uh, oh, just froze. oh, she froze. Okay, I was gonna say it's still her. I'll I'll do it uh, if she uh, should I? I mean, you need, you need me? You need Andy to do it? You need some Cameron? Cameron, go ahead. Okay. Oh, <laughs> you insulted him in Thebes. Showed no respect. You brought the punishment upon yourself. What is? Okay. What is wisdom? What is finer than the right men f get from gods to hold their powerful hands over the heads of their enemies? Ah, oh, yes. What's good is always loved. So all praise Dionysus. Praise the dancing god, god of our revelry, god whose justice is divine, whose justice now reveals itself. Enter Dionysus. Yes, I am Dionysus, son of Zeus. You see me now before you as a god. You Thebans learned about my powers too late. Dishonoring me, you earned the penalty. You refused my rights. Now you must leave. Abandon your city for barbarian lands. Agave too, that pitiful creature, polluted. Must go into perpetual banishment. And Cadmus, you too must endure your lot. Your form will change, so you become a serpent. Your wife, Harmonia, Ares' daughter, whom you, though mortal, took in marriage, will be transformed, changing to a snake. As Zeus's oracle declares, you and she will drive a chariot drawn by heifers. You'll rule barbarians. With your armies too large to count, you'll raise many cities. Once they despoil Apollo's oracle, they'll have a painful journey back again. But Ares will guard you and Harmonia. In lands of the blessed, he'll transform your lives. That is what I proclaim. I, Dionysus, born from no mortal father, but from Zeus. If you had understood how to behave as you should have when you were unwilling, you'd now be fortunate with Zeus's child among your allies. Oh, Dionysus, we implore you. We've not acted justly. You learn too late. You were ignorant when you should have known. Now we understand. Your actions against us are too severe. I was born a god and you insulted me. Angry gods should not act just like humans. My father Zeus willed this all long ago. Alas, old man, then this must be our fate. A miserable exile. Why then delay? Why postpone what necessity requires? Child, we've stumbled into this disaster, this terrible calamity, you and me, both in agony, your sisters too. So uh, I'll go out to the, to the barbarians, a, a foreign resident in my old age, and then for me there's that oracle which says I'll lead a mixed barbarian force back into Greece. And I'll, I'll bring here with me Harmonia, Ares' daughter, my wife, I'll have the savage nature of a snake and I'll lead my soldiers to the altars, to the tombs in Greece. And even then, there'll be no end to my wretched sorrows. I'll never sail the downward plunging Acheron and reach some final peace. Father, I must be exiled why without do you, throw, you. Why do you throw your arms about me, my unhappy child, just like some young swan protecting an old one? gray and helpless because i have no idea where to go once i'm banished from my father's land child i don't know your your father's not much help farewell then to my home farewell then to my native city in my misfortune i abandon you 
An exile from spaces once my own. Go now to Aristides' house, my child. How I grieve for you, my father. And I grieve for you, my child, as I weep for your sisters. Lord Dionysus has inflicted such brutal terror on your house. Yes, for at your hands I suffered too, and dreadfully. For here in Thebes my name received no recognition. Farewell, father. My most unhappy daughter. May you farewell. That will be hard for you. Lead on, friends, so I may take my sisters, those pitiful women, into exile with me. May I go somewhere where cursed Kytherion will never see me, nor my eyes glimpse that dreadful mountain, a place far away from any sacred Tharsis. Thir Let others make Bacchic celebrations their own concern. Exit Agave. The gods appear in many forms, carrying with them unwelcome things. What people thought would happen never did. What they did not expect, the gods made happen. That's what this story has revealed. Exit Chorus and Cadmus, leaving on stage the remains of Pentheus's body. The end. <laughs> yeah! Why do I have we this stuff, it. Lucy? Because Halloween. Why not? Yep. I yep. mean, Halloween is all your long. You gotta, you gotta have that shit. Always. Another happy <laughs> yeah. ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. so this one is Woo. this one is definitely a tragedy in all in all cases and uh, instances of the word. For all involved. You must. Uh, yeah. It's, uh... You killed my son. <laughs> no, you, no, you did. Uh, oh. <laughs> that's, that's true. Oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Styles clash that fool. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully you all you all enjoyed that. Um yeah, it's, and hopefully uh, you learned something. Yeah. What do you like, think the takeaway is there? The takeaway is uh, that everybody needs to respect the gods no matter what, <laughs> all the time. Your and all of your family too, or else you can be ah! totally screwed. <laughs> Ooh, okay, dude. Spooky. No, th okay. Th that's why, like, you know, a lot of older, you know, Greek stories and like Bible stories are. Yes. Are you gonna get punished if you don't yeah. do what we say? Yeah. I'll kill your whole family, and then everyone's gonna worship me for it. It's like, mm -hmm. fuck, man. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're talking about fear and faith and well, everything of that nature. And that's the thing too is like, um, you know, there's uh, actually in Dead by Daylight, there's some lore uh, about like the hag who she mm. had a friend um, in school who who. Um, so so the, the hag is a, is a character. Her name was Lisa originally who would um, uh, her grandma did like witchcraft and stuff. And so would start dr um, drawing all these these uh, these symbols into her, her workbook for get for good grades. And her, her uh, grandma told her, don't do that. So then she teaches her friend. Her friend starts doing it, and what? the friend starts to incite the the fact that like people don't want to be dead, right? So when they die, then they stick around. So if you make fun of a spirit that dies, they're going hmm. to haunt you. And it's like super interesting. Like I love that so much, and That's it's cool. so true. It's so like this is uh, like honestly, Scott. Besides it being already fall, and you know around the spooky time, what made mm -hmm. you? What inspired you to pick this one? I uh, I mean, this is generally viewed as one of the best. Uh, Greek tragedies just because it's I mean like it, it gets you I mean at, at some point in this play you you have to feel something for these people <laughs> uh, and it's and honestly and it, it worked out really well with with five people to, to divide up the lines and yeah it's just it's it's cool and, mm -hmm. I, and I figured I figured at least one of the home buddies would have props that they could use as a head and body parts <laughs> I was pretty confident in that I, I got I got another, I, I, yeah I, I have that have stuff one. it's all in a storage closet right now sure, sure. <laughs> it's like you know, yeah. I, I did have an actual painted head uh, that I would use before, or that I would have used, but I don't have it with me now. But uh, but I was like, I have a skull, and also <laughs> I, have, I have John Cena. <laughs> I got a big Cena. Killer. Yeah, which Killer. Scott gave to me. I mean, Scott, yeah. Scott <laughs> yeah. we've gotten so much use out of this. Right? Like, he is, this is our home buddy's mascot, truly, at the end of the day. is sure. this, not Not John Cena, toy John Cena. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Whom you can see. He's the only the only yes. version that you can see is is that toy version. So. Yeah. Bring boy. Bring boy. Yeah. <laughs> we use him as a baby. We use Bring him as a boy. dead body. Whatever you need. 
<laughs> truly a, a, Final a, a man is, of diversity. He's so yeah, um, he's so talented. <laughs> he's very good. He's the best member of the but he's not gonna lie. He's reliable. Sure. Ex- he's always here. Yeah. Squeeze me. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, uh, uh, how, what what did you think? What are your thoughts? Uh, I didn't know this story. So I didn't know it either. I think it's it's. It, I really like Greek stuff and so mm-hmm. uh it's really it's it's really cool for me especially as a storyteller not that we aren't all but because we are all mm-hmm. um to find the origins of some normal mm-hmm. or some tropes that we're familiar with in film yes. you know uh yeah. like when i was watching i watched the entirety of cheers for the first time ever like i, I don't even know that i've watched one full episode but when the pandemic hit mm-hmm. and I was like, holy fuck, Cheers did all the jokes before. They did everything every, first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They did everything, everything first. first. Are, you going on, are you going on the Frasier next? I tried. <laughs> it didn't hook me. So uh, oh, Frasier's, Frasier's a little bit. Nah. I'm like, sure to it's me, good. It's hard to me too. It's, I'm it's sure okay. it's good, but I got back on there's not enough, for, um, Anatomy for the show. There's not so. enough like, people of color in, in that show. Uh, it's like, so 90s. I get, I get bored. Yeah. So I, I, I truly like Cheers was good enough for me because like like when I when I say like color to me is like um, well, I mean I'm saying in terms of sitcom, um, but mm. but like personalities and stuff like to have the dynamic the the multiple people dynamic was good yeah. enough for me for Cheers because you never knew what was gonna happen right because and you come have in, strong women where, characters to some yeah, extent correct yeah. and then and then when you get into um, into Frasier I'm like I know that I love Seattle Seattle's my favorite city literally, literally my favorite city and I just get bored because there's no there's no like unpredictability in there to me. Dude. And the- as much as I love Niles and whatever, like, you know, I like Niles, I should say, because I don't love the show. But, uh, um, but like, I'd rather watch like uh, Ted Danson as the doctor. What was it called? Be- Becker? Becker? That was, like, that's more like, uh, like on par with like what I liked because it was a little bit unpredictable because he worked in a doctor's office. So you mm. got more shit there. Mm. So, uh, I, I was like, so, so having never watched Cheers, the first time I was like, keenly aware that it was colorless right but you're right mm-hmm. like there's like some women with some agency to some extent talking about mm-hmm. some things but yeah. the first time well, they I'll, have I'll, I'll stand up a little bit for Fraser Roz yeah and, please and, please, and, yeah, and, like please. Uh, it makes it sound like Fraser is two white guys having white guy conversations which Fraser is not that <laughs> I want to state that real quick <laughs> Like Roz and Daphne are like amazing female characters that I know a lot of women who are actors are like those are my two favorite sitcom mm-hmm. actresses um the, and I'm not saying were, I'm not saying that needs to be the case for you, but I just want to say no, like, like right I, now we're pitching Frasers if it's just two white brothers. No, I will say that, but it was stuff. also like again like two white women that were like uh, they were different enough for me for, at the time that I like from like I'm saying like the sure. like the accent is enough to so for some people as a kid. To me, the accent sort of like was like oh like you know I'm not saying enough like. Well, relative. I think the show the show was about that, but the two women were smart, and that's sort of a different mm-hmm. than a lot of '80s '90s sitcoms. For the most part, we're like I'm the put upon wife with the fat husband who's a goof, and well, that, at yeah, most all like old... all I can do is like put my hands on my side and go oh you. And yeah. these were two single women who were very independent and like did well on their own. But to me, like during that time, I I, mean, I liked I liked Will and Grace more so because like yeah. truly Karen was mm-hmm. like. I mean, her name is Karen, but like Karen was was <laughs> Karen was those that the that wrapped into one and everything more like to me like so I I understand like uh she like you know the girls were great like I liked them but I I didn't as I didn't identify with them enough um because like they were just like a little bit like you know I I but we'll have we'll like listen we're gonna have this conversation and I'm here for it let's let's do this we're gonna do this yeah. like I think we should have a sitcom talk um. You, me, Jess, mm. at least, because like uh, I think that would be fun, uh, and uh, everybody else is welcome to you, Andy and, and Scott, if you guys want to join. But we'll do this at some point. I had uh, a but... I had a top of the pandemic friends party with Mary Chief and a few few people that like the show. But in order to have the party, we also built in like an hour where we talked about why it's not really great now, or like <laughs> what, like, well, oh, not I... really great, but like yeah. what are the implications and sure. how to be culturally. How, what did it like basically we're just talking about the sjw stuff which i think mm-hmm. it does at the very least prompt a conversation it doesn't make me go oh i wish for the old days when mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. yeah. I, would, I, I, would, yeah. I, I would never I think want we should recommend to, oh go ahead kim and then well, I'll i never and i never this is this is the, so we did an episode of uh, about friends on el ray nation and we talked about 
you know, like, hey, we're going to talk about the show and not just about the fandom, but also about like the criticism of it. And I was very I said, like, I'm like, I am all about talking about how there's no people of color on that show. I said 100 percent. I said also that is the easiest BuzzFeed has written that article 18 times mm. already every year. It gets shared every year. I said, I'm not saying I don't want that to be the conversation. I'm saying I don't want that to be the whole 20 minutes of our episode. We, there's other things to criticize about. I, I totally agree. With no, you. I, yeah. I think Rather what we should do is recommend. Listicle. I think Bye. we should recommend an episode of our show, like whatever yeah. show that we that you know we will decide. We'll, we'll figure mm. it out. Because honestly, I could do this on my week too. On my week, well, I think we should do that. What, what like what do you guys think? Because I, I think could do my like, next week. Yeah, I would love to do that next sure. week. Let Let's do. Well, I'm, uh, I might not be here next week as well. As the oh, one. okay. Oh. So then we'll do it for two weeks from now. So Andy will do his thing next week. Then I believe. And then, um, and I'll, well, actually, I'll check with Emma because Emma's moving in uh, like soon, so she might be eager oh. to She's actually do her. Well, uh, uh, so. we, we, we can't do we can't do uh, um, trivia without no, no, either, though. Yeah, yeah. If no, she, we're if not. That's we're what not going to do trivia. Do, yeah. No, no, we're not going to do that. Um, yeah, but yeah. yeah, so I'm just saying, like, if she wanted to do like a like a chill night, because I don't think she's going to have the energy to. to like, I wouldn't after moving and working all this time. Like, Fuck I wouldn't. No. I yeah. wouldn't. So I would no say way. that if she wants to, she can. Uh, she can have her week. If not, then we'll do um, we'll do Andy, and Andy will do his his um, his uh, fighting games night, and then mm. uh, the following week we'll do this. So two weeks from now, hopefully we can do our our sitcom uh, chat. And like again, this is coming from like I respect everybody fucking in this group. Like in in, in chat too, you guys have really good opinions. Fucking. Like I I really really expect every uh, or respect everybody. So like I'm never gonna like try to like you know. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and and if you can prove me wrong, that's great because I would love to learn more. Wait, no, I, don't I haven't seen the entirety of stuff, you know. You know, I'm very open-minded. Like I'm not with if I get proven yep. like or if someone tells me something a counterpoint, I'm open for it. Like I'm not I'm not I'm just letting you know what I thought of as a child, you know. That's that's yeah, the last that's time I started watching, you know. So that's it. But Scott, thank you so much for this. This yeah. was fucking great. Yes. I I I love it so much. So uh you did have another one that you were saving for uh, you guys were saying for Emma, which one is that one? Uh, yeah, for so when that's you, the the when we loop around again? Yes. Yeah, so that's the La Sistrida which is, uh, it's a very famous, it's an ancient Greek uh, comedy, which we haven't done Greek comedy. We did a Roman comedy last time. So oh. it's a Greek mm, comedy. That's, interesting. It's, it's very famous for this sex strike that the women uh, put upon the men in that Can one. Can you say oh. that name oh. again? Oh. Lysistrata. Uh, the Lysistrata is how... Lys- did you ever, did you ever, see, did you ever hear of, say of uh, Chirac, the Spike Lee movie? Mm, no. Yeah, yeah. It's an adaptation of that. Yeah, I oh, had okay. heard of it, but yeah. Lysistrata. But so gotcha. we don't say Lysistrata? You, it's fine. You Who can. says that? Who says what? Who Lys- says what? Listen, listen, so, so I have to fight. To Lysistrata? So I will say, Jess, so I have to fight my. Um, my way of pronouncing things because I'm Hispanic and so right. like with Greek it's very hard so I say Dionysus or uh, Dionysus you know like as opposed right, to Di- right, Di- right. Dionysus yeah. and yeah. so so like the way that you're saying it is the way that I would say it Lysistrata Lys- 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 what is it again Cam I mean um, uh, Scott Lysistrata Let's just sit up. See how weird that accent. is? Yeah, it's so different. It's like yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. and that, that shit is hard for me to get. That's why I just like was like fine with saying Dionysus, even though I, you know, was, I was butchering it. But still, like, and, I, and and but Scott is like, you. thank you so much for being so kind to us in terms of like, you help us uh, a lot with the pronunciations in the document, but also you don't give a fuck if we mess it up. Oh, of course. And again, and again, and Janelle, Janelle, you, you bring up an interesting point though, because yeah, with, with people coming from different cultural mm-hmm. um, cultural things and different languages that they grew up with. Yeah, you you look at, at especially longer words and you, mm-hmm. you think that accents should go in different places and it's it's all it's all good. Yeah. Uh, pronunciation and pronunciation guides are as I've learned over the years. I didn't know this when I was younger, but they are <laughs> totally everything with with regards to pronunciation is uh, it's racist and colonial. It's colonialism yeah. to enforce pronunciation and it's bullshit. My kids are right over there. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I thought yeah, we could hear them literally in the background. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's that's it's actually a really interesting topic to uh, to discuss. I love that. This is you yeah. know, uh, I love that we just like naturally spawned uh, uh, one of our shows. Like for yeah, truly talking. Mm-hmm. Like I yeah. think that's great. And Ooh, so, maybe that's our YouTube. 
Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's a good one, too. And, like, mm. honestly, I like, thank you, Cameron, for your passion, too, because, like, I, I've never, like, uh, you and I have a lot of, like, uh, heated conversations about, like, stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so grateful that we're able to share that with everybody and be like, okay, like, you know, you know, we're very open minded and all that. And all that. So um, yeah. thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Scott, so much for, for, for this show. Uh, what do you got going on? Uh, let's let's start doing. Oh, actually, Scott, you go last, I guess, because you're the host. So why don't sure. you ask? Yeah, us? yeah. Yes. Tell, so let, point, let's point. hear let's hear from old man Cadmus himself. <laughs> What's that, Sonny? Uh, <laughs> so I'm doing a subathon tomorrow. Nice. I got a basketball game tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I, I got some some possibilities. Might do some Resident Evil Two remake. Might do some Final Fantasy fourteen. Uh, maybe some Tony Hawk. I mean, I got you know. Uh, dead by daylight we got we got stuff to play we got stuff oh, yeah. to play uh oh, we'll fun. we'll figure it out yeah, and no. then and then coming back monday tuesday uh back to the wrestling show kind of needed a little uh little break to to be re-inspired but uh tag tournament coming up <laughs> it's soon. like being a wrestling fan <laughs> mania is over i'm gonna take a month off yeah. i'll come back <laughs> for real uh yeah main event monday night is uh naeem versus iffy in a iron man match because yes. uh, naeem got counted out at the last pay-per-view and he needs what to we go again we also booked something else uh i believe somebody wanted cameron versus hector right for or, because there was of a grit versus there's a gritten versus hector because mm. they oh, argued hector, about right. Calif california burritos and yeah. says oh, nice. that, that <laughs> french fries don't belong in a burrito and we'll see and we'll do we'll do argument. a poll during chat so you guys wow. can uh, vote on what I'm, you guys. I'm pro um, California yeah. burrito. Uh, me too. I mean, me too. yeah. Me too. So we'll see. It's potatoes. Uh, it's just well, I guess let me ask you. Like, what, do, what do you say? What do you say, Scott, as a New Yorker, and then what do you say, Jess, as an LA uh, a base person too, or you know, Pot born? French fries in a burrito? No, no, way. <gasps> no way. Okay, I, there it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna take that stand. You also don't know All what right, pack it up. avocado is. So get out of the car. <laughs> New York doesn't like can't get a fresh fucking avocado to save their avocado. life. It's new to them. Like it why is. I, I, I well, had that, that's a, a whole other discussion. Avocado, uh, Connecticut, avocado Connecticut ruined uh, sushi, exchange so. students, uh, mm. national exchange students, and okay. they were like, "What avocado?" Um. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, so next where person, are you? A pineapple gonna... on pizza. <laughs> well, yeah, pineapple on pizza, it. you guys. Oh. Yes. Oh! Oh! Salty and sweet. Oh. Salty and sweet. Salty and sweet. <laughs> Give me both. Scott. Not in the same Okay. Mouthful. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. uh, so, Cameron, go ahead. Go next. Cam, Cam, go next. Cam, go next. What do you got? Uh, well, I'll be back this week. I kind of pretty much took all of last week off after my little medical uh, what oh, have you in the ER. Uh, so, a lot of this week was kind of recuperating mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, so, this week uh, we'll be back. Um, I did just pick up on the Switch uh, the. 25th anniversary of night trap which is uh what the fuck really that's on yeah. switch yep so i'm gonna be what playing that oh man night trap which is uh, that was this is the what makeup looks like on a good camera <laughs> <laughs> night trap for those who don't know night trap was like that and mortal kombat were the two games that got like video games in front of the senate and that's yeah. why i created the esrb however if you go look at it it is like such a cheesy b uh horror movie from the 80s it is uh mm -hmm. And so yeah, it's on the Switch, so I'm gonna be playing that at some point this week, uh, and then back back to back to my normal shit. You know what I mean? Back to my normal shit. Sounds perfect. Yeah. Dude. Cool. Uh, Janelle, I'll, I'll go next because because uh, I want Jess to talk about her shit. Um, so uh, last, I mean, um, uh, before uh, Scott, uh, okay. Monday, Tuesday, I'll be with Andy on his stream. Um, so we have Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we do we do our show here at seven o'clock. And Friday we do stuff too. Um, I play Dead by Daylight, I play Overwatch. I do a lot of fun stuff. I watch things with y'all. But also in the Discord, make sure you join the Discord. Uh, Scott, I don't know if you have a command for the Home Buddies Discord, but yeah. that is where we are giving, uh, we, we are watching uh, things with people in the community and it's been a fucking blast. Today it's we just been watched. It's really fun to just chill out with some, some so watch fun. Stuff, it's yeah. been so fun. Like today, so we watched all three Beverly Hills Cops movies over the yeah. past mm. three weeks, which is so good. It was amazing because like I had a great time. I, and, and then so today we watched, uh, I, uh, Cameron recommended it. It was on Shutter on Amazon, um, uh, through Amazon. Uh, it was called um, Scream Queen, uh, my, my Nightmare on Elm Street, which had to do with the mm. uh, the the star of the second nightmare on elm street um where it was what's his name uh mark his name was mark 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 Patton. and uh and mm. so this was this is known uh culturally as like the gayest horror movie the gay you know one of the gayest movies because this man was cast in this role and uh just 
played it like how he would play it. And and um, the movie may or may not have been written for uh, a gay person that inadvertently. And so it was like this documentary was really fun to watch. It was uh, a lot of a lot of eye opening things. And it talks about like the you know AIDS in the eighties, which is was a time mm-hmm. that it was hard to be uh, out and out as a um, as a, anybody that's gay, but especially an actor who with the spotlight on you. So that was a lot of fun. So we're probably gonna watch um, actually Nightmare on Elm Street too at some point here yep. in this coming week. We cool. also uh, in, in October we're going to be doing some sp- uh, a lot of spookies. So we'll watch some horror movies. We're gonna watch at least at the very least we're gonna try to watch at least the monsters or a Treehouse of Horror from the Simpsons um, mm. every so often if we can't do like a full movie. So that is what's yep. happening. Make sure you're joining the Discord. We, it is a lot of fun. So we gotta okay. we gotta watch. We got to watch Trick or Treat. Would love so that. Yeah. Good. Would love oh, that. Oh, and we've also been watching Cobra movie. Kai at night. If you hey, yeah, Cobra Kai. Tonight. Cobra Kai has been, a, been a, a nice little random one. That and we're saving a, a Dark Crystal for you, Scott. Mm. Yes, yeah. We were waiting for that one. And, and what it was it that Andy, Andy literally told me the other day when we were at 7-Eleven getting something, Andy goes, how come Scott can watch Blank? Oh, uh, Human Centipede, but can't watch uh, 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 Dark Crystal. And I was like, that's interesting. <laughs> Because only only one of those is horrific and scarred my soul, and it, and it wasn't human centipede. And I said, I there said was, it's because it was yeah, I, not human centipede. Yeah, I said um, it's because he is too in tune with his childhood, and that's why I said he is he's mm, too okay. he is too much, like which is a great thing because that's why you are the toy collector and everything. Yeah. I said I literally <laughs> think because he's too in what tune. What do I put in a glass with box? His childhood <laughs> with his child self inside of him, he cannot yeah. watch that movie. That's it because he yeah that that's why. Yeah. But uh, bless, uh, you had a, a an amazing day yesterday. Tell us about it. Well, I I it was so nice to see so many of my friends in the chat. It's really it's really hard not to stream something live and not want to look at the audience. Especially because, yeah. like, when you do improv, you're used to getting that audible feedback. So it's really nice to, like, mm-hmm. see people, like, whooping it up in the chat. Anyway, I, th- I think Heartbeats is the next best thing since avocados. So, uh, Oops, Scott, I- since fries and burritos. <laughs> <laughs> Av- avocados are great. I yeah. know. Uh, um, <laughs> But I thought it was such. It was. I'm so excited about it. It went off like without a hitch in my mind, and like this, it's only like gonna get better from what you guys saw. And I, we have a great cast and a really fun community already around it. It's kind of funny, and maybe you guys can uh, re- relate to this. When you, it's different when like you're doing a show and someone wrote the lines, and you, you can blame whatever you're doing on that mm-hmm. person. But when you're, when you've been the one that created it, you've got to get people interested, and then. You gotta hope people will like it. So it's still kind of foreign to me this idea that people will actually like it. So, but they do for sure, mm-hmm. and I like it too. So yeah. thanks and then, for the support. And so uh, make sure you guys are joining Jessica's Discord. Uh, Jess, if you can put a link to yours so that people can talk about the show, those mm. have seen it. I will do that. Uh, actually, I'm great. gonna so I'm gonna link you to specifically to Ripley. There'll be a uh, yeah, that's what, yeah, yeah. I Ripley. think I think we're gonna put it up on YouTube after all. Beautiful. Um, oh, nice. Just so you guys can see it and keep, like that way you can keep up with because there's going to be eight episodes this in 2020. So great, well great, great. And then uh, and you, so while she's you, doing that, go ahead, Scott. Because I was going to say, and if you this. leave the polls, if you leave the polls of who's going to live or die every episode, then you'll, you'll kill eight people. <gasps> you apparently. guys, Andy, Andy successfully. Uh, it wasn't just me. No, you did no, it. Cause it was Pandora. It, it was no. It was either Panda or Andy. Well, so basically, Chifo came Pandora down to like she died to... by like by one fucking vote, and and I didn't vote because I was on my on mobile doing my makeup. <gasps> and then a- Andy goes, "I voted to kill the patient," <laughs> and then it won by one vote, and I was like, "Andy, <laughs> it's Mary." I'll do it again. Like, ah. I can't it wait. Was like, it was heartbreaking for all of us, and to see the guy who plays now for me. Yeah, he killed two people. He kills, he's killed two people. How can he come back from that? The, the brother was like, I just learned I had a sister. And now, <laughs> uh, she's, yeah. dead. now she's dead. We learned. Yeah. We realized, though, that even though she was going to die, we could have had at least one more seat. We have like we have nope. a whole outline. We just learned a Fuck lot. Em. Yeah, she had to fucking die. <laughs> it was really sad. <laughs> we do it live, That's the most Grey's Anatomy shit. That's yeah. the most Grey's Anatomy It never shit. come it back. It really is. It's very Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> never come back. Cause again, oh, oh, Pandar. Pandar doesn't know how many votes. You know, you know what you did. You know she what can you come did. Back. She can come back as like it. a she can come back as like a cousin with a hat like they do in other TV shows. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Squirrel, squirrel, we're killing Amber the twin too. And gets carte blanche because yeah. because he was modding, um, but I, I only wanna, once. I want to mm-hmm. say thank you to to my son who got together the items to make my thyrsus tonight. 
and my oh, wife yeah. who actually yeah. put it together. Yeah. Yay. Oh, that's oh, awesome. I love that. that. So I could have a prop. <laughs> um, yes. Um, I will. I will not be on Monday. So okay. no Mythology Monday stream this coming Sweet, week. Sweet, I get that slot. Yes. If you want to wake up in the morning, <laughs> six a.m. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll do my, my normal stuff this coming week. Uh, we've been reading Ovid's Metamorphoses on Monday and Thursday, which is super cool. We actually read the story of Acteon, which was referenced in this play. Ah. So, you know, there's that. Oh, um, can I interrupt for yeah. one moment? Um, of just course. because I forgot that uh, Tuesday, I, I've been doing the Kids on Brooms uh, system or, with, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. on Hyper RPG with, uh, no, with Matt Acevedo. Yeah, so. right. oh, yes. uh, and then Cam, you are doing on Wednesday, you're doing Spy Island, correct? I believe so. I don't know. No one's told me anything. I believe so. I believe. I believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I believe so. I, I think it was another week. Yeah, like, so. It was anyway, like first week of October. That's on Hyper. Yeah. So uh, go ahead. Uh, sorry, Scott. Go ahead. Oh. Uh, oh, we lost Andy. Okay. Maybe maybe he'll be back. Uh, yeah. And then and then this Thursday, I will be on Hyper again for Rage Warhammer. Quit. So. Yes. You so can see us like, on yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday yeah, then. Yeah, right. We're, we're all over Hyper. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, otherwise, uh, get my book. <laughs> Get Good his luck. book! Yeah! Get his book. I used it actually when I was naming my, oh, nice. my character for Tuesday. Um, cool. I, I, I went with something. Can't uh, but uh, yeah, it was, yeah, I was like, I was like feverishly like. Nice. <laughs> so, so, so thank you for this. This is great. Awesome. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Any, any last final thought? What is written? No. No. Cool. Oh. 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 Beautiful. No. Um, cool. Oh, yeah. And, and I, I will make a note. Rabid Wombat reminded me. So my wife's soap company, uh, Bubbles and Things Soaps, uh, yes. we have we have a whole line of really cool Halloween and horror related soaps okay. that are coming out very soon. Uh, we'll be revealing them in like the next week, I think. So. Oh, my he gosh. The, he revealed the blood one, though, right? Uh, oh, she hinted at, oh. at some blood. No, but that's she not even... posted it on Instagram. Well, how soon can today? I clean my mouth and butt with a, a human centipede soap? Mm. It's yeah. on the list. It's on yeah. the list. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yes, right, so, so that's one, one final plug. Peg Junk, I don't know that they make custom bars so much unless you were like, I'd like to order 100, and then she'd be like, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Yeah. I, th I think you should definitely I want an evil dead hand. Yeah, or so. message me, and that's... Mmm, that's a good one. Cat make... butt hole soap is so smart. I want to make a mold Which of Janelle's Andy, penis. Andy does have. Andy, show them your tattoo. I want one in the shape of that. Oh, let's like see. That. Like, like, yeah. The old like, dead hand. Ooh, nice. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that what that is? Oh, yeah. yeah. It got oh, in my God. hand. Oh, and went oh, bad. God. oh God. Andy, I want to. I'll play. I'll play some DVD with you tomorrow night if you're around. Some dibid. No. Some dibid. I mean, okay. I haven't played since my stream. I'm down. Oh, perfect. So you're gonna throw my game. Sick. I know. I was gonna say. I was like, "That's kind of that's kind of sucks." Wow. Because like, wow. I mean, <laughs> listen, you better not fuck up no generators. I rage. I got. I rage no, quit. I okay. can't. I, I rage. No, I rage quit. I can last night. It's okay. Because I'm because I'm on my period, so, so I'm not I fucking bitch. around. So I'm not fucking around. Okay. All right. <laughs> I didn't even. I didn't I had even a great time with you. Andy was also in that game. I didn't do anything wrong. No, you did nothing wrong. I literally, I literally, if you're being mad, it's because I'm on a period. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 just, just, yeah, please uh, play with yes, me. No, uh, yes, can't. Yes, yes. It's too late. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, got, I got my, I got my. The drama. I got my apartment buddies. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Cats? Uh, oops. T -West? Suddenly last night. Suddenly last night, Janelle's like, you got, Cameron, you need to get on it. You got to save that person that's been stuck. Even though for two weeks, this girl's also been like, fuck them. They're not with our group. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Suddenly, suddenly last night, I, I'm, I'm telling you, this, this game is the most homework in the world. And then you figure one thing out and then you, you take it on everybody else. And you're like, fuck. Yeah. That's why this morning yeah, I was like, I oh, man, that was really mean for no reason. <laughs> I was like, oh, because I'm bleeding and I'm fucking upset about it. You know? Just All right. Bleed. Let's go. That's uh, great. That's right. Great stream, Scott. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.